but I want to talk about the climate that's in the world right now. I want to talk about why you're seeing worship dry up in a lot of places why churches are closing their doors and why young people are turning away from the things of God in many cases and turning to sin. I want to talk to you on this first Sunday night of 2023 on something that God has laid on my heart. My message is the death of John the Baptist. The death of John the Baptist. God bless you. You can be seated. Is it all right if I take my time tonight? If you were to take a trip to Europe, you would find that faith has in large part been exterminated in many places. Places that were churches are now tourist venues. Beautiful buildings, no worship. If there is worship, you won't find it among the white Caucasian community. You'll find it among the Filipinos. You'll find it among minority groups. You'll find it among Jamaicans. Thank God for the Jamaicans. Amen. Amen. <laughs> You'll find it among people who have not lost their faith. You'll find it among people who still believe. Hallelujah. Jesus asked a question one day. He said, when the Son of Man returns, shall he find faith on the earth? And tonight, at the beginning of this new year, I want every person in this room under the sound of my voice, I want you to make up in your mind, the devil is not taking my faith. Let me say it again. The devil is not taking my faith. He's not taking my joy. He's not taking my Holy Ghost. I will not relinquish it. And I will not let the things of God die in my life. Because you're seeing it come to the United States. It's in our universities. Where they mock the things of God where they play games concerning the things of God, where liberal professors are determined to stamp out Christianity. Be very aware of this. There's a lot at work behind all of this. There are governmental forces that would like nothing more than to break up families. They'll do it through welfare programs. They'll do it for entitlement programs. They'll do it through the promotion of every wicked thing. Wickedness is celebrated while righteousness is pushed to the side. And much of it is an effort to keep people fractured and weak and dependent. And behind all of those forces, there's a devil. He is terrified that men will stand up and be men. He is scared out of his wits that women will stand up in their full Holy Ghost authority and become what God has called them to be. The greatest thing we could do tonight is to let families rise up in the Holy Ghost and say, choose you this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, come on, I need some men, I need some women to... I need you to grab a hold of this. I need you to get this at the beginning of this year. Before the year is even here, I want you to grab a hold of it and say, We will serve the Lord. We will pray. We will seek the face of God. We will worship. And I will not let the things of God be killed. I want to I wanna take my time because the topic is dense. This topic is dense. It's, it's heavy. I, I, I thought about preaching a fluffy little message, but I don't have many of those, Brother Newton. I want to jump into the deep part of the pool, and I want to talk about the great things of God. By the time I'm done with this, I want to I put the devil on the run. 
I want false doctrine to be running out the door. I want addiction to be firmly under our feet. I want pornography to be kicked out of people's hearts and lives. And I want the sunlight of God's power to shine. Hallelujah. I want the glory of the Lord to fill this house. I want to shake this house with the glory of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. John the Baptist. I, I, need to, I need to just tell you the story at first because this begins with a wicked king, Herod. If history is any indicator, Herod was... Herod was filled with wickedness. He spent his time in luxury and, and decadence. And the Bible uses the word surfeiting. One place it described it as having their heart overcharged. We're living in a world like that. We're living in a world that's filled with a bunch of Herods. They have too much time on their hands because they don't work. And they have time to riot, but they don't have time to get a job and make things better. They have time to indulge in every sin and every vice and every wicked thing, and it's becoming more perverse every day. They're sinking further and further into the quagmire. Herod was there, drunk on power. He felt like he was above the word of God. But there was a side to Herod that likes to hear what John said. John preached the word of God to Herod. Let me just stop right here and say thank God for the voice of God in your life. You might get offended by what the voice of God says, but thank God every day that voice is there in your life. That's the voice that walked in the garden in the cool of the day. That's the voice that thundered from Sinai. That's the voice that the, the prophets would say, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the church. That voice is the voice that spoke over Jesus. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Men might have forgotten how to hear the voice, but God's people know how to hear the voice. I want to hear it over the pulpit. I want to hear it from the Word of God. I will read it every single day, and I will have a Bible plan, because I can't let the voice die in my life. Hallelujah. We are supposed to teach it to our children. We are supposed to earnestly seek it. And John enjoyed listening to the voice of the man of God. It was not the voice of a hireling. You'll know the voice of God because it doesn't care how much money you make. If you're looking for smooth messages, I, I remember reading one prophet, he said the people, the people of Israel had fallen so down, so far down, into sin that they would tell the prophets prophesy unto us smooth things if you came to hear smooth things you came to the wrong church this word of God will step all over you this word of God will push you back into alignment this is heaven's chiropractor and it'll crack your back and pull your arms and tug you into alignment and make things like it needs to be in your life don't Tell me what I want to hear. Tell me what I need to hear. Don't tell me smooth things. Preach, preach the word. Preach heaven beautiful and preach hell hot. Preach salvation. Preach holiness. Preach the oneness of God. Preach the power of the name of Jesus. There's got to be a voice. Now, this is not how people normally handle the voice. For every one John the Baptist, there were hundreds of false prophets. Their goal is not to tell you the truth. 
Their goal is to get your money. <laughs> They'll tell you whatever you want to hear if you'll just open your wallet and if you'll open your purse. They don't care that the Bible says over and over and over again that you are to baptize in the name of Jesus. But they're afraid of that message because if they preach that message, there's a price to pay. John the Baptist has to be able to look Herod right in the eyes and say, this is the word of the Lord. There's a lot of people that would call John a fool. They would say, John, get with the program. John, tell him what he wants to hear, but that's not how the voice of God works. John is not there to placate Herod. John is there to remind him that though Herod is a king, there is a king over kings. There is a head over monarch there is a head potentate and every man and woman will stand before that king even herod and there's a religious world that will tell people exactly what they want to hear you want to be baptized we'll baptize you however you like you want to you want to come to church in flip-flops and little short shorts come on It'll be just fine. God doesn't care about what's on the outside. They'll say that because as people degenerate further and further, they can't get them to come any other way. But you'll find out that a real church believes that you bring God your best. You still bring God your best. Hallelujah. You wouldn't come out from your lazy boy and your everything all sloppy for the president of the United States. There's a better one here than any president there's ever been. There's a higher authority than any president there's ever been. So we bring our best. If the best that you have is flip-flops, then come on. But God's going to graduate you. God is going to bless you. God is going to turn you into a son or a daughter of God. Uh. Herod is torn because he wants to hear John, but he also wants Herodias. Drunk on power, he thinks he's above the word of God. And so Herodias is his brother Philip's wife. And so he looks at his brother's wife. He covets her. He wants her. And he says, I will have her. And he takes her unto himself. Herodias is thrilled with this. This is a promotion. No longer is she with Philip, the little guy. Now she's with the big shot. She's with the big cheese. She's with Herod. This is who she's been aiming for all along. She is the original gold digger. And John looks, Herod rather, looks at John and says, it's all right, isn't it? And there's a religious world that would answer, yeah, it's fine, do whatever you want. They used to preach holiness, but they don't preach it anymore because there was a price to pay. They used to preach Jesus' name, but many people gave it up because there's a price to pay. They used to preach the infilling of the Holy Ghost, and they know that when you receive the Holy Ghost, you'll speak with other tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance. They know what the original church looked like, but they're afraid of that message because it's the undiluted voice of the Word of God. I didn't come to water down one verse. I didn't... My. If you're going to get the stain of sin out of your garment, you can't dilute this thing. It's got to be full strength. It's got to be the power of the name of Jesus. It's got to be the infilling of the Holy Ghost. It's got to be the original book of Acts message. And there's got to be a man. There's got to be a voice that looks this world in the eye and says, this is the truth of the word of God. Thank God for a Bishop Godair that preached the word of God. Thank God for men that stood in the pulpit and said, Thus saith the word of the Lord. Thank God for a people that will still speak. Amen. 
Every generation has to contend for the truth. Every generation. You have to pay the price. You have to be ready to live for the truth. You have to be ready to die for the truth. Herodias hated him. Who do you think you are to stand in my way? I'm saying that because something powerful happened here. John would not move. He stood for the things of God. We have to stand for the things of God. In 2023, if you have been wishy-washy, it's time to grow a backbone. Well, my wife won't let me come to church, grow a backbone. Come to the house of God, lift your hands, and let God do things in your life. Well, my children, they won't let me. My husband, he won't let me. Get to the house of God and let God work miracles in your life. Let the, let the Holy Ghost do what it's designed to do. It's not lawful. And so the Bible says that when Herodias saw that she couldn't get her way, she began the process of seduction. And I want to talk about that. There is a larger theme that I'm addressing here right now. And at the core of it, it's why the voice is dying all around the world. There are people letting John the Baptist die in their life. John the Baptist is more than just a man in the scripture. He is the voice of repentance. The Bible says that he is the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. Hallelujah. He will bring down every mountain. He will exalt every valley. He'll make a highway in the desert. Hallelujah. It's the voice of repentance. More than that, more than that, it's also the voice of Elijah, the prophet. This is how repentance talks. Don't ever let the devil kill the voice of repentance in your life. Don't ever lose the ability to repent. The Bible says that Esau sought for a place of repentance with tears, but he was rejected. The Bible says that if you continue in sin willfully, after you know the truth, that you find no more place of repentance, there remains no more sacrifice for you. Be careful when you ignore the voice of God. Be careful when that voice that says, this is wrong, this is a sin, you override that voice because you want what you want. Be careful when you get so much money and so much power, you think you can override the things of God. That voice isn't there to spoil the party. That voice is there to save your life. And let me say this, if you keep reading... The Bible says that they came and told Jesus that John had died. They told Jesus that John had died. And, and Jesus, the Bible says, was sorrowful and he went away into a desert place. That is when the multitudes came to him. And folks, that's when he fed the 5,000. The feeding of the 5,000 is connected to the death of John the Baptist. The reason he was there in the first place was because he went there to mourn and to seek the face of God. And they found out he was out there. And Jesus did one of the greatest miracles of his life. In a desert place as he mourned the death of the greatest prophet that had lived up to that point. I'm preaching about the voice of repentance right now. I'm getting to a much bigger subject. I'm just laying the foundation right now. Because let me tell you how Herodias works. Herodias, the Bible says that when she couldn't get her way, she called her daughter in. And her daughter came in and she danced for Herod. The Bible says that she pleased them. It wasn't just Herod. She pleased his whole retinue, his whole entourage, his court. And I, I, won't, be, I won't go into it for the sake of 
a mixed crowd and children that are here, but that word please doesn't just mean made them happy. There's a lewdness, there is a wickedness, there is a barbarism associated with this. This is not a G-rated moment. This is a, a terrible, profound wickedness, and it took a lot to please a soppish, wicked king. And whatever it was that happened, she pleased him. And he said, I'll give you whatever you want up to the half of my kingdom. Be careful when you make deals with the devil. Be careful when you play games with the devil because the price will be higher than you want to pay. If you're here and there's any part of you that loves the things of God, nurture the right side, not the wrong side. If you're torn between the voice of the world and the voice of God, it's time to kill that wicked voice and it's time to let the voice of God have its way. Now's the time to pray like you've never prayed. Now's the time to come to church like you've never come to church. Now's the time to worship with all your heart, mind, and soul. Don't you let the darkness win. Don't you let this present evil age win. But like Peter said, save yourself from this untoward generation. I want you to look at the difference between Matthew and Herod. The Bible says that the fame of Jesus went out and they said, this is John the Baptist, this is Jeremiah, this is one of the prophets, this is that, this is, the, and they, they hear the fame of Jesus and Herod's conclusion is wrong. And ultimately he, kill, he kills John over it. If you go, this is Matthew 14, if you jump two chapters ahead past the wilderness and the 5,000, you'll see Matthew coming and saying the same thing. Whom do men say that I the son of man am? Some say you're John the Baptist. Some say you're Jeremiah. You're one of the prophets. But Matthew's got a different take than Herod has. This isn't an opportunity to get a cheap thrill and a show from Jesus. This isn't an opportunity to treat him like a circus act. This is a time for divine revelation when he said, I know who you are. You're greater than any prophet that was ever born. You're greater than Moses. You're greater than Isaiah. You're greater than Jeremiah. You're greater than any man standing here right now. You're the King of Kings. You're the Lord of Lords. You're the bright and morning star. You're the everlasting Father. You are the Christ. What will you do with that revelation? Will you play games with God and die? Or will you let the church be built in your life? And so the thread of sorrow is woven through the feeding of the 5,000. The weariness and the heaviness that is on, that is in Jesus' heart. Now this is the microcosm, if you can see this. Herodias, there's a knock on the door and her daughter is there and said, Mom, you're not going to believe this. He'll give me anything. The daughter goes back to the mother and says, whatever you want, he'll give it to you. What do you want? And Herodias finally had her chance to kill the voice that was standing in the way. There are people that are looking to leave Jesus because he's standing in the way of what they want. They'll leave what is lawful and righteous, one place said, because they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. I'm going to talk just for a moment about that reprobate mind. Because if you keep overriding that voice, it's going to grow more and more faint. If you keep overriding that voice, if you, you're going to find that you can't feel like you used to feel. Preaching doesn't touch you like it used to touch you. And the, the presence of the Lord doesn't move you like it used to move you. What's going on? You're being entertained by the dance. You're being entertained by the pleasure of this world. You're, being, you're choosing pleasure over holiness. The Bible says that in that last day, men would be lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. 
Oh, you got to let something rise up on the inside of you and say, that says, I don't care how good it looks and how good it sounds, I take Jesus. You got to let what Moses said resonate in your spirit. I would rather be a slave in the brick pits than to be a prince in Egypt. I'll choose the slavery of God's people over the pleasures of sin for a season. It's what David, when he said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. Hallelujah. I'll take heaven over the pleasures and the trinkets of hell. And Herod finally took the last step. It's what Herodias always wanted. And he sent the executioner. If you read this, this is found. This is Matthew 14, but if you want to read more, it's also in Mark 6 and Luke 9. Mark 6 has a big, long, a big, long rendering of more detail. In Mark 6, it says, by and by, he sent to get John's head. I don't think this happens overnight, Brother Galindo. I think it happens by and by. I think it happens over a period of time. There's a gradual hardening. There's a gradual coarsening. There's a, there's a book that is worth your time if, you, if you'll, if you'll uh, take the time to read it. It's called Slouching Towards Gomorrah. And, and it, it, it talks about the coarsening of the culture, how that over time people lose their faith day by day and week by week. And there's a, there's a continual influx and a continually worldly push. There's continued entertainment. All it is is Herodias' daughter. It's a dance that is designed to mesmerize. It is a dance filled with drugs and alcohol and cheap entertainment and sin and every wicked thing. It's not lawful. And there's a voice that stands against it. But if you ever kill that voice, the day came when they brought John's head on a charger and said, you want it hit, here it is. And to that wicked king and that wicked queen, they brought the head of repentance and they silenced, they successfully silenced the voice. If you keep fighting the voice, it'll stop. It'll stop speaking. Fast forward, and I'm going to move past this part here, but I've got to say this. Fast forward to Jesus' crucifixion. Herod, filled with sin, filled with lust, has always wanted to get his hands on Jesus. And finally, Pilate sends him, Jesus, and finally he can see the monkey on the tricycle. He can see the circus act. He can see the bearded lady. He can see the the three-eyed cyclops, so to speak. He wanted to show He wanted a circus act. Do something cool. Raise the dead. I've heard you're a healer. Change something. Can I see it? I want to see it with greedy eyes. He's waiting to see. Jesus said it like this. He said, a wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. If you're looking for cheap entertainment, go to Hollywood. If you're looking for cheap entertainment that'll rot the core of you out, look at this world because they'll dance for you all day long. But if you're looking for heaven, you've got to seek the face of God. If you're looking for righteousness, you've got to open up the word of God and let him talk to you. Say something, Jesus. And the Bible says Jesus answered him not a word. Heaven doesn't talk to people that kill repentance. Heaven will sit there mute as you beg it and as you implore it. But this is what happens when you kill the voice. This is what's happened in Western Europe. It's what's happening in, in urban areas right now as people live in sin, as people, as people live in wickedness and they indulge in every wicked thing. The dance is in full effect, ladies and gentlemen, and repentance is dying all over this world. You've got to make up in your mind, not in my house. Not in my place of worship. It's 2023 and I want this church to know exactly what they're dealing with. There's a devil that wants to steal your worship. There's a devil that wants to stop preaching. There's a devil that wants to tell you that you have to shut your doors and church is not essential. 
And there's got to be an apostolic body that says there's nothing more important than the house of God. There's nothing more important than the presence of God. There's nothing more important. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Hallelujah. Somebody say praise God. Praise God. Amen. Now, I can start preaching. <laughs> because you're not just dealing with the local setting. This is a tactic. This is a tactic. This is a, this is a, a way to seduce. You're not just dealing with John the Baptist. You're dealing with the spirit of Elijah. When they looked at Jesus, they said, we know you're the Messiah. When, the Bible says, Elias has to come first to turn the people's hearts back to God. When will Elias come? And Jesus said, he already came. And they did with him whatever they would. And then they understood he spake of John the Baptist. I'm not just talking about a man. I'm talking about the spirit of repentance. I'm talking about the spirit of restoration. I'm, I'm talking about the same spirit in John that looked at Herod and looked at Herodias. Is the same spirit that was in Elijah when he looked in the face of those false prophets. When he looked at Jezebel and he looked at Ahab and he said the word of the Lord is true. It doesn't matter how many prophets you kill. The word of the Lord is true. Jehovah is God. Baal is not. And the God that answers by fire. Let that God reign. I'm here to tell somebody in 2023, you gotta let that voice resonate. You gotta let that voice roar. You gotta let that voice have its way in your life. Turn your heart to God. Believe God. Follow the things of God. It's not a polished message. I wish I had a polished message to bring you, but John was a rough man. He wore camel's hair. He ate locusts and wild honey. So did Elijah. Elijah the Tishbite. When Ahab said, what did he look like? What did the man that showed up to you look like? He said, he was a rough man. He had camel's hair on. He said, this is Elijah. I'm here to tell somebody repentance is a tough message. It's a rough message. It's jagged around the edges. It doesn't care about your feelings. It doesn't care about your... It doesn't care about your delicate sensibilities. It's the word of God. And it's true from the foundation of the world. It's true. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. That's his word. And it's a strong word. And it's a word with authority. And it will save you. If you'll let it speak. Repent. Turn to God. I was talking to a young man one time and he told me everything we were doing wrong. We were having church wrong. We were, we were talking wrong. We were dressing wrong. We were, everything was wrong. And all of his 19 years of wisdom. His parents were wrong. Everybody was wrong. And finally, he looked at me and said, what do you think about that? He was waiting on an argument. I looked back at him. I said, you need to repent. This is a generation that hasn't learned the meaning of repentance. I know what repentance is like. I had a dad that taught repentance. And I don't just mean the kind in the altar. I mean the kind that when things, when I did the wrong thing, there was a price to pay. You're dealing with a generation that doesn't know what the woodshed was all about. You're dealing with a generation that's never been told no. That's never been told that's not right. You're dealing with a generation that can't tell up from down, left from right, light from darkness. 
Oh, but there is a word. There is a truth. There is a heaven and there is a hell. And there's got to be somebody that recognizes that and says, I want it more than anything else in this world. There has to be a fear of God upon man. The scripture says of the wicked, it says that their throat is an open sepulcher. The poison of asps is in their tongue. Cursing and bitterness are in their mouth. The way of peace have they not known. And there is no fear of God before their eyes. That's part one. Now I'm moving to part two. We've been looking through the microscope at the atom. Now I want to look through the telescope at the solar system. Same pattern, just bigger scale. Because we're not just dealing with John the Baptist. We're dealing with the spirit of Elijah. And just like Elijah faced a wicked queen, John faced a wicked queen. Just like they danced in John's day, they danced before the prophets of Baal. Just like they seduced Herod, they seduced the people in the days of Elijah. And they're doing the same thing in 2023. The dance is still going on. The voice is still speaking. It's just on a cosmic scale right now. Can I take a couple minutes and talk about it? This is where John the Revelator saw up in heaven. He saw a woman. This was a wicked woman. It called her mystery. It called her Babylon. Babylon. Doesn't mean Babylon as in the physical Babylon that had long passed and fallen into the dust. What the, the Bible says spiritually, it's called Babylon. Spiritually, it's called Sodom. Spiritually, it's called Egypt. All of the vices and the wickedness and the rebellion towards God is found in this woman. She's covered in jewels. She's, she's, the Bible calls her a harlot. And not only a harlot, but the mother of harlots. She gives birth to daughters. This is Herodias, and this is her daughter. And just like Herodias' daughter danced, these daughters dance. They dance to seduce, just like Jezebel did. You'll find no greater seductress in the scripture than Jezebel. And, and when you're reading the book of Revelation, I've said it before, it bears repeating. It's not just grabbing imagery out of the air and just saying things to say things. It's drawing from Old Testament principles. In Revelation 2, it said that the church was in danger because it was allowing that woman Jezebel to teach. There was a spirit of idolatry and a spirit of seduction, a false religion that was rising up. And John the Revelator was saying, don't let it seduce you. Read it in Revelation 2. It says that she seduces my servants and it causes them to stumble and fall. There would be a false religious system that would rise up. You won't find much more dangerous than false religion. False religion is a mother. And she has daughters. False religion masquerades as the bride. But she's not the bride. She's drunk on the blood of the saints. It was false religion that threw the Christians to the lions. It was false religion and inquisitions and false false doctrines it was trinitarian thought it was the wickedness of rome putting on feminine garments that threw the righteous people of god before the wild beasts and into the gladiatorial arenas it was her that locked up the great saints of god it was her that John saw riding on the seven-headed beast of Rome. Don't you ever doubt it for a minute that that beast carried that woman to do the work of hell. And there's a devil behind it then, and there's a devil behind it now. 
just like then today there's got to be a John that stands up and says it doesn't matter what you say to me it doesn't matter what you do to me it doesn't matter how much you try to kill me I'm going to preach it anyway I'm going to preach it on Sunday morning I'm going to preach it on Sunday night I'm going to preach it on Tuesday night I'm going to preach it on Facebook and YouTube I'm going to preach it the word of God is true it's always been true it will always be true praise God I'm talking about what John the Revelator saw. He saw it in the macro. And that's the spirit of this age. It wants to kill that voice. It wants to stamp out the voice of righteousness. <laughs> False religion, it gives birth. It has daughters. When, when false religion can't get its claws into you, it'll send its daughters to do the work. Rome gave birth to false religion. And listen, there's people that will point to the Catholic Church and they'll point to the Roman Church, but the false religion is a lot more than that. There's a lot of false religions and they don't even have to be Christian. If they'll seduce the minds of people, the devil will use it for his glory. The devil will use it to take the souls of men and women to hell. This is every false prophet. This is every false teacher that spins a spell, that's, that weaves a web. This is anybody that falls under the seduction. There's a reason it's called doctrines of devils and seducing spirits. There's a seduction to doctrines that tell you to do whatever you want. That's what they wanted John to say. Can I do this, John? Do whatever you want. There's all kinds of people that'll tell you, do whatever. It's like Burger King. You can have it your way. You don't want pickles on that? Fine, we'll hold the pickles. You don't want mayo? Fine. You don't want Jesus' name? Fine. I'll take, I'll take the goosebumps without the holiness and without the oneness, please. Hold the communion and the foot washing. Hold any personal sacrifice. Hold daily living in righteousness. And let me live like a devil and do whatever I want to do and they'll dance for you and they'll mesmerize you and they'll please you they'll tell you whatever you want to hear Whoo, hallelujah you gotta make up in your mind I'm not impressed with the dance I'm not impressed with the show that's what the prophets did on Carmel they danced they cut themselves they made a show to Baal and the whole time Elijah just sat there waiting on the God that answers by fire when you know who God really is the dance doesn't impress you the dance might work on Herod but it doesn't work on John there's got to be godly eyes eyes that see ears that hear that says that's not the voice of the shepherd that's not the voice of God that's not what's going to lead my family hallelujah it's a seductive thing to think that all I have to do is believe that's it nothing else believe and give us your money isn't that what harlots do I'm not trying to be too strong I'm not trying to be too forceful I'm telling you you got to fall in love with the bride you got to know the voice of false religion when it starts talking hallelujah and, and Herodias sent forth her daughters, and false religion sent forth her denominations. And they dance. They dance with all of their ideologies. They dance and play games with the Sabbath day. They dance and play games with the Godhead. They will spin it and twist it and distort it whichever way you want to. But ladies and gentlemen, it is a dance. It is designed to seduce. It is a design. It's designed to get you to where they can manipulate. Praise God. There's got to be a voice that pierces through all of that. 
Because when the dance is done, if you fall for it, if you believe the lie, and that's what the scripture says, it actually said the spirit speaketh expressly. That means, that means it's hollering. It's lifting up its voice. It's crying out, the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time men would give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. The Bible says it gave, it gave details of what it would look like. This is how powerful the scripture is. Can I say it? It says that one of the things they would do is they would forbid to marry. Who are you talking about? I'm talking about people that forbid to marry. <clears throat> I won't take it any further. I'm not trying to hurt anybody's feelings. And I'm not trying to poke fun at people that are part of any faith. There are good people in faiths that need to come out into the bride of Christ. You need to come out into the glorious liberty of Jesus Christ. I'm not here to make fun of anybody. I'm just here to tell you, you got to be in the right bride. Hallelujah. Forbidding to marry. Why does that matter? Why would they even put that in there? Because there would come a day when that one little doctrine would cause molestation on an international scale. It would cause scandal that would rock people's faith to the core. There are people right now that will never darken the doorway of a church again because of sexual promiscuity and homosexuality by people that were in authority and should have had their soul's best interest in their heart. And that old prophet put that in the writing and said, you want to know what it looks like? It looks like this. And it's a lie. And it will seduce you. You've got to look through it and say it's just a bunch of smoke and mirrors. It's it's just a bunch of there is a real church there is a real truth there is a real God and he's strong and he's able to deliver you I'm wrapping up I'm coming to a close but they'll tell you that you don't need to baptize that's just another dance They'll tell you that you can't eat on the Sabbath day. It's just another dance. They'll tell you that it doesn't matter if you're baptized in Jesus' name. It's just another dance. They'll tell you that you can show up and live however you want. It's just another dance. There's a real church. There's a real church that says I'll give him everything. I'll give him my life. The devil is petrified of the genuine church. Hallelujah. There's only one thing that can topple the works of Jezebel and Ahab. I don't have the time to get into it. But I'm not just preaching about John. I'm, I'm preaching about a greater truth. I'm talking about a false religion that is busy seducing people today. It'll tell you what you want to hear to seduce you. That's the archetype. That's the Jezebel of Revelation. It's false religion. And it's her daughters. That's why there's churches on every street corner with every flavor that you can imagine. Whoa! But if you've got an ear for the truth, you're going to walk in one and say, that's not it. You're going to walk in another and say, that's not it. You're going to get a little closer and a little closer. You keep on seeking. The Bible said if you'll knock, it will be opened. If you seek, you will find. If you ask, you shall receive. One day you're going to walk into the right atmosphere and everything's going to change. Everything's going to move. The power of the Lord is going to be in that place. You're going to find the God that answers by fire. You're going to find the God of Pentecost that is able to reach you to the uttermost. Let's stand in the presence of God. <laughs> People wonder why we're stuck on the name of Jesus. There's a reason why we're stuck on the name of Jesus. There's no other name that can save us. And the name of Jesus is the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. 
But more than that, ladies and gentlemen, Jesus is the name of the husband. Jesus is the name of the one true living God. And his bride doesn't go to anybody else. The harlot doesn't care. Father, son, Holy Ghost, no big deal. There's many customers. Mary, Peter, we'll pray to anybody. We'll pray to statues. Because she's not worried about monogamy. She's not worried about oneness. But the bride is. The bride says, there's only one. There's only one. There will only ever be one. Hallelujah. One God and Father of all, who's above all and through all and in you all. And His name will save us from our sins. That's the message that caused the death of Jezebel and Ahab. That's the message that toppled a wicked regime. And that's the message that wins in the end. Let's lift our hands to heaven. I'm preaching to a generation right now that's trying to kill that voice with everything it has. It's trying to kill it in the universities. It's trying to kill it in the media. It's trying to mock everything that's holy. It's trying to tell you that that God isn't real. It's trying to reduce it to a fairy tale and a cultural experience. Oh, but come on, John. Come on, John. Let that voice live. Let that voice live in your life. Let the voice of repentance speak to your heart. Let the voice of restitution and redemption speak in your heart. I'm going to open up this altar this first Sunday of 2023. I want some, I want some people to come and lift your hands. Right now, right now, that false woman has her hands on some of your children. False religion, false idols, atheism, agnosticism. It has, it has its hands around young people today and young lives. There's got to be a church that stands up and says, we will serve the Lord. In 2023, we will serve the Lord. Don't you fall for the same old song and dance. Don't you fall for the same lies. Don't you fall for the same thing that caused Israel to stumble. John has to live. Repentance has to live. The messenger has to be the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. 